In this first video, we're going to look at some advanced patch functions in Magic Q. The first function we're going to look at is morphing heads. So this can be particularly useful when, say, you're on tour and you move from one venue to another. You want to keep all your programming for your fixtures, but the new venue has a different set of fixtures. So you can easily morph from one fixture to another and keep your programming. It can be a great base for your programming at the second venue. So first of all, I'm going to morph one of the Maverick Mark II spots in this uh, show file here. So I'm using the Chauvet demo show file if you want to follow along. Now you'll find it in the demos folder in Magic Q. And I'm going to go to the tab here for the Maverick Mark II spots. I'm going to first of all select the bottom spot here. So that's the one that I want to morph. And then what we need to do first is select the fixture that we want to morph to. So I'm going to go to choose head. And I'm going to go to Chauvet. And I'm going to morph this spot, this Maverick Mark II spot, into a Maverick Mark II wash. So I'm going to select the wash and then the mode that I want to morph into. I'm going to morph into basic mode. So with that selected, you can see at the top here it says Chauvet Maverick Mark II wash basic. That's the fixture I've selected to morph to. Now all I need to do is make sure I've got the fixture I want to morph from selected and then click the Morph Head button up the top right of the software here. If I click that and confirm that I want to morph into the Chauvet Maverick Mark II Wash basic mode, I can click Yes, and we see it's disappeared from this tab because I'm currently in the tab for the Maverick Mark II spot. If I go to the tab for the Maverick Mark II Wash here, we can see that fixture that I've just morphed to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a previous queue that I had and see that it's included in that queue. You can see in the visualizer here, it's this wash now along to the very far right here. And if I bring up this queue here, this is a previously recorded queue I had, bring this up and you can see that this fixture here is now included in that queue. Not all of the data will always be perfect. You can see the blue color here is a little bit off because it's different on this fixture. But it's a great start for your programming, so you can then go through and modify that and edit that blue color to update it within that queue. All right, the next function we're going to have a look at is cloning fixtures. So this is again really useful if say you move from one venue to another and you want to add more fixtures to your show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this Maverick Mark II wash that I've just patched here. It's really simple to do. I just need to click the clone head button up the top here. And it asks me if I want to make a copy of this head. I say yes. And I can select what I want to clone. I'm going to leave it on palettes and queues. So I want to clone both the palettes and the queues for that fixture. Click done. And we can see it's now patched another head, which I can then change the DMX address of if I need to. And it's going to, again, because it's completely cloned that head, it's going to have included all of the programming for that head as well. So if I Again, bring up this spot static queue, like so. You can see over on the far right in my visualizer here, I now have two of these Maverick Mark II wash fixtures, and they've both come on in that same blue color in that queue. So it's patched a new fixture, and it's included all of the programming from your previous fixture. The next function we're going to look at is copying head programming. So this is quite similar to cloning, but this time what we're going to do is we're going to patch another fixture and then we're going to copy the head programming from a previous fixture onto this new fixture. So this way I've already got my Chauvet Maverick Mark II wash selected. I want to patch another one of these. So I'm going to say patch it. Obviously if I knew the specific address and universe I wanted this on I would then select this here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type 1 because it doesn't matter where I put it in this instance. And I'm going to say enter and it's going to patch one of those fixtures. And you can see it stuck it right in the middle of my visualizer here. If I just bring up this spot static queue here, currently this fixture isn't coming on because I've just patched it as a new fixture. So what I want to do now is copy the programming from one fixture to another. If I go and hold the shift key on my keyboard, you see up the top here, one of the soft buttons changes to copy head prog. I can select that, and in my command line it says copy head programming, select source heads. 
I'm going to select this head here and it says select destination. So I'm going to then select my new fixture here and it's going to confirm if I want to copy programming between those two heads. I'm going to say yes and it tells me it's done copying the programming. So now if I activate this spot static queue, you can see this center wash here comes on in the same position and same color as this wash over on the right, which I copied from. So that's copying head programming. Final couple of things we're going to look at briefly in this video is minimum and maximum values on channels and setting dimmer curves. So to do this, I'm going to head over to the view channels section of the patch window. If I click the view channels soft button, this takes us to a view of the patch where we can see all the individual channels on every universe. This is sorted by universe on the A encoder here. So currently it's set to universe one. If I select this soft button here, it changes to universe two. And you can see, I can see my Maverick Mark II spot here patched on universe two. And I can see all the channels of this fixture here. If I try and change back to universe one, I'm going to change some of the minimum and maximum values of some of my dimmers here. So currently I've got a queue here using the front of house wash fixtures. What I'm going to do is set minimum and maximum values on those channels. So what this means is it's minimum and maximum values that those channels can go between. So this might be particularly useful, for example, if you want to set a minimum on some old dimmers that take a little while to warm up maybe, and you can set that minimum so they're ready to come on, they're already warm. Or maximum, say for example, you've got some blinders in a relatively small venue, you don't want to completely blind the crowd, so you can set a maximum value on that to set the max brightness of those blinders. So this is done using the minimum and maximum columns here. So I'm going to highlight the minimum column for all of my front of house washes. And I'm going to set a value of 10% for there. So these have come on at 10% of my visualizer because that's the minimum value that those channels can now be set to. If I set a maximum value of 80%, these will now be able to dim up to just 80% brightness. So if I lift my front of house wash queue here, between 0 and 10% it's going to do nothing because it's already set to that 10% value. So between 0 and 10 it's all already going to be at 10%. If I bring up the fader, it's going to dim until 80%, at which point it's not going to dim any further. It's going to stop at 80%. I can lift the fader between 80 and 100% and it's going to stay at that 80% level. If I want to set uh, it so that it runs smoothly between those minimum and maximum values, what I can do is set a particular dimmer curve to allow that to happen. So in my curve column here, if I highlight this and select the command line, it's going to pop up all the different dimmer curves that I can select. So we've got a few different uh, preset dimmer curves such as linear and square, and we've got some custom dimmer curves. But what I want to set is limit. So if I set limit here, what this does is it makes sure that it's going to dim smoothly between those minimum and maximum values. So now on this fader here, 0% on the fader would be that 10% minimum value and 100% on the fader would be that 80% maximum value. And it's just going to dim smoothly between those minimum and maximum values. I can just bring that fader up like so and it will just dim smoothly between those minimum and maximum values. So that's a few advanced patch functions in MagicQ. So now we're going to move on to the next video.